occasion for to collect the vote in this here meeting. Will some sister raise the hymn? We are brother leader. 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 We That Brother Deacon Jones Tenner's reservation and the rise and shine Baptist Church, month ending April 22nd in six. I hope I haven't kept you waiting long. I had to stay in my reports on that meeting, you know. I don't mind waiting for you, honey, but tell me how the meeting come up. Well, they kicked him right out of his own church. That poor old man. You don't say that sure is dirty. You can't have any luck treating old folks that way. Sure can. And you should have seen the way those hypocrites were making over charcoal. You'd have thought he was St. Peter himself, the way they were yesterday. And him the biggest backsliding sinner in the church. Well, why don't you get up and expose that shine and tell him just how he's been handing up in corners? Do you and... think I could make them believe anything against that saint? Why, they have me burned like a witch at the stake if I told them half I know about their new deacon. Well, what are you waiting for now? Did you never get into him, right? No, not so. And I was the kind who make you come and listen to preaching, whether you like it or no. Well, you was the kind who make me come and even like that kind, whether I want to or no. Miss Mary Lynn, the deacon says to tell you that I expect you all to attend to your duty with more punctualness than here too full. Wait for me, Chilga. I won't be long. All right. All right, Brother Longtree. Lead on. I'm awfully sorry, sir. You're not going to be with us any longer. For to me, you're the main part of the rise and shine Baptist Church. It won't seem natural like not to have you on the roster. Hello, my boy. Good evening, sir. Glad to see you, sir. Yes. I guess all that kept me interested was the service I could render those who was depending on me for guidance. And now that that's been taken away from me, I guess I ain't no use. Oh, yes, you's use, Deacon. You'll always be used. Why, you've done more for this parish than any other colored man could do. Building this church and raising two generations of Christians. You know, you're the one who told us that the reward of good deeds is not to be expected down here, but in heaven. That's right, children. I did teach you that, didn't I? is the home of the willing workers. It's getting dark. Kind of early, ain't it? Why, no, Deacon. You, the sun is still up. Oh, sure. Do you care if I walk home with you, Deacon? No, I expect not. I'm going home. There's a light that guides me. Cause I'm awful tired, and they don't need me anymore. But I've got to go alone. Oh, 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 what do you say should be done with the body of the beloved Elder Jones, Deacon Johnson? Funeral services at eight o'clock in the morning. <laughs>
The immediate the culture of China is notified. Yeah. And before the setting of the sun over yonder mountain, yeah. negotiation is underway to restore the brothers of the fatherland in whole or in part. Yeah. I could go back to the encyclopedia, yeah. telling you of instances when a country which was hard to pick out on the map was treated with a proper disrespect. Yeah. And apologies was made for same for manhandling one of the brother and system without showing just cause and due reason for such and sundry behavior. <laughs> These I go back to the good book to repent you the power there is in getting together and sticking through thick and thin. <laughs> Organizations, what we need. <laughs> Organizations. <laughs> with the fear of God in your heart. <laughs> and the plow in your hand. <laughs> we will travel into the promise. <laughs> All in your heart, all in your heart, in your heart. We be coming to the promised land. I just received word by telegram that the brethren in Tulsa is waiting to join our movement 1,000 strong. Every cent for the furnishing of this new home for yourself and all those who care to join the whole. <laughs> then, in a little while, when anybody molests a black man, the United States of Africa can call him up and ask him questions. <laughs> and forthwith, there'll be negotiations involving several countries, my friend. <laughs> but it takes money to get to Thomas Land, or well, you can't walk all the way. No. You can get to Chicago by foot. Yeah. You can even get to New York by foot. Yeah. But Africa is a town you can't get to without taking to the water. <laughs> That calls for a boat. Yes. Sailing boat. Yes. One of them ships. Yes. Can you follow me? Yes. In the distance, may the rising sun, yes. what making the hills and valleys of Africa all the colors of the rainbow. Yes. They've heard of our coming. Yes. And they're standing there, hundreds, thousands of them, waiting to welcome us to the promised land. Yes. <laughs> the sun's is shining out in all its things. Now I can see what they got in their hands. Something to shape and size the sweet potato for the cooker. Something shining out in this world. What? They all have the same shining taste in their hands. Yeah. And there's a stand in the light. The sun's is shining so bright that it looks like they're holding fire in their hands. Right. Can you guess, brothers and sisters, what they got in their hands for you? Diamonds! 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 Big as taters! Oh. Yes, sir! The ground over there just naturally grows. Oh. You don't have to sweat the plants in nothing. <laughs> All you've got to do is to reach down. And there you have the greatest treasure which the whole world I could after. Yeah. In the prime to be there. Yeah. In the prime to that land of opportunity and prostitution for each and every one. Yeah. Africa. 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 The great man's name. I saw it disturb you this time of night, but what I got to tell you is important. Charcoal Johnson has got all the people down in the Masonic Hall, getting them all heated up about leaving the plantation and, and sailing their own ship back to, to, to Africa. Judge Lee, you've got to do something about it. What can I do, Sug? You've got to do something about it, Judge Lee. All right. We'll fix them. Operator. Operator. Give me the sheriff. Now to 
They're looking at me like as I was just afraid of. I, I'm your leader, but I'm in trouble. Put down that shade. Where's your parents, Mary Lou? But they ain't come from the meeting yet. What seems to be the matter, Deacon? What you so excited about? You ain't scared of nothing, are you? Surely the leader of the black race ain't figuring on leaving the ship. No, the leader of the black race ain't figuring on leaving the ship. But he come to tell you that the load is heavy and the road is long. Without you, him whom the Lord has chosen to lead the people out of the road of disease and starvation into the valley of helplessness and posterity is liable to fall by the wayside in shame and disgracefulness unless you come to my rescue in the name of the Lord. Why, Deacon Johnson, I have respect for your work because it surely has brought the light to the eyes of the people of this city. I know exactly what you're asking me. I was asking you to stand by me, Mary Lou. I've got enemies. White folks hate me because I was bringing light men to the brethren. And some of the very brethren I was leading into the city of Jerusalem is envious and jealous. And I can't trust no one. But if you say you's with me, I know I can trust you because I love you, Mary Lou. But things is happening thick and fast. And I can't go on unless I has you, your hand in mine, up the ladder of fame and glory that is waiting for us at the other end of our journey. I wants to marry you, Mary Lou. Deacon Johnson, I feel the honor of being your lawful wedded wife. But, gee, me and shug has been going together for a long time. And it would pretty nigh break his heart if I hauled off and got married without his knowing of my intentions. Which comes for the other, your duty or your pleasure? Shug is young enough to forget anything and forgive you for any promise you might have made at haste or some time or t'other. Which sounds a pitious. Mrs. Shug Jackson or the Empress of the United States of Africa. Why? Deacon Johnson. It's Shug. Tell him you go on to bed. I'm sleeping, Shug. You better wake up. Your mom's home is in trouble. Oh! That mom is terrible to come. Why, Deacon Johnson. Tell me quick, what's happened to my mom and pa? The hell you care. Been telling me how much you hate this here Deacon. Now I find you locked up in the house with him alone when everybody all over town is looking for him. And your mom found the hospital was busted head. Young man, it's too late for you to be trying to spy on this young lady's character. Because as treasurer of the committee of financial, she's supposed to be... Listen here, here, Deacon. I was the only one in this town you ain't buffaloed with your preachings and promises. Because Mary Lou's been telling me how you've been hemming up in corners trying to force your attention to her. And to browbeat into one of them wenches you can sweep off for some loving. She knows what she was after. You're just standing there doing all that arguing because you're jealous of the Deacon. Besides, the Deacon comes up like a man and asks me to be his wife. He ain't never insulted me by expecting me to be no wench that he can sweep off for some loving. I guess you know what that is. Let me see you talk your way out of this. White folks say they're going to run you out of town and I stay happy with us. Young man, the weight of responsibility hangs heavy over your old head. You belong to a race that is doomed, unless one of us got the courage to stand up as a leader. Shoot the deacon's right. You'd be a traitor. I don't give a damn what both of you say. I'm going to tell the world what you two been carrying on. You pretend to be so sanctimonious like right? you, nothing but a damn hypocrite. Shook, for God's sake, don't turn him over to me. Hey, you ain't asking me to his man, Leon. Shook, he ain't my man. And I'll marry you tonight if you just say the word. Oh, Mary Lou. Oh, please. You step into the room. Mary and me will take care of this. 
I put my fate in your hands, Mary Lou. Now tell him this lies to you, Mary Lou, because I love Stealing folks' money, and when they search everywhere and can't find them, we ain't gonna stop till we search every nick of your house and bring them to justice. Yeah! Yeah! Listen here, this is the house of respectable citizens, and I, I fancy you ought to respect it, especially in the presence of a lady like Miss Mary Lou. <laughs> a lady, nothing. She's been a lady around here with that Stephen Buzzard Deacon Johnson, and I bet she's a busy packing right now to skip town with him this very night. What? Oh, oh, so that's it. Just you watch these booty goody gals. Shame on you! Yes, shame, shame on us! Oh. Lane around behind the altar! Oh, come shame on us! Shame on us! Shame on us! Shame on us! Tell these filthy mouth chimes that they're lying, that they're dirty lies, that you ain't been laying around with no crooked deacon, that you's a good gal I've been figuring on marrying in the morning. <laughs> in the morning would have been too late. She could have waited that long to be beat with. <laughs> well, come on, I guess we better get searching. I bet he's under the bed there, uh, just sneaking and stuffing and blowing. I'll take him out of his misery. <laughs> meeting in my house this time of night. Well, what's the matter with you? Have you heard the news? Yeah, but the meeting ain't till tomorrow at 10.30 when the train leaves for Tulsa from the Cotton Belt Line station. What are you talking about? Well, why ain't you heard the news? What? Well, Deacon Johnson called Go on ahead, brother, the mayor of the city, Mrs. Mm -hmm. Joe Nathan Lee, and explained the redemption of his people mm -hmm. to the white friends of the colored people. Mm -hmm. And for we give Brother Johnson the power to lead his people whether he feels necessary. Mm -hmm. And the uh, deacon thanks the mayor for the whole race and begs do his dogs to lead his flock to Tulsa mm -hmm. to parade the streets thereof. Mm -hmm. And the mayor up and shakes the black hand of the deacon with full contempt. Oh, what is oh, that? That? Well, 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 and just a think, we was round here low rating the deacon for nothing. Mm -hmm. Humiliating his honorable name just cause we didn't know the power from this mm -hmm. yeah. yeah. the prosecutor a good man. Well, I'm glad he sure had a chance to recover. Of course, you know, I ain't said nothing about him. No. Oh. No. Yes, we, we is sorry for to come to your house at this late, but we was desperate after the way the deacon vanquished from the hall. People come in to laugh and say we was fooled out all our money. Yeah. 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 Well, I was probably first to put my foot on the gospel train and more. I'll see y'all on the train. Good night. <laughs> Shouting. You're as big a fool as I thought you was. Oh, what what are you doing? It ain't nothing else but a lot of lies you've been hearing. Oh, man. I was just a minute ago here talking in this room with the deacon, and he ain't fixing to do nothing else but run away with Miss Mary Lou. Oh, 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 you don't have to believe me. Just search that room. There's something funny about this. Guess I'd better search. Yeah. <laughs> get the organ to the newspapers in the carrying out of this year project, there's no telling how soon the truth will come to pass. 
and the plans which I fomented in my own head will come to fulfillment. But instead of that, they all knighted against me. The best friend the colored people ever had. The only one thus far who was able to get more than three of them to stick together overnight. The only one who could convince colored people that Africa is the home of the black man, and there's where he ought to be. Back home to Africa is my slogan. Excuse me, Mr. Everett, but Mr. Longley says the lines are ready to perform for the parade, and they're just waiting on you to give your command and commence the action. Tell Mr. Longley, I say, come here this minute. Just one more question, please, Mr. Emperor. Uh, what is the attitude of the Africans in regards to your transporting four million strangers into their land? Hmm. Well, now, brother, you done gone too far for me to give you the latitude of the whole of Africa. That comes on another department. A long fee is in charge of all the measurements and machinery of the movement. A uh, fancy. Uh, show this before to Mr. Long, and he'll give me any necessary information concerning the latitude of Africa. Uh, now, that's all for the present. Well, I thank you. I hope you'll grant me another opportunity to interview you. That's interview. all right. You're entirely welcome. Latitude of Africa. as soon as you're ready. Sure is a grand sight. There ain't never been nothing like that since the Lord made us out. One of the grandest parades you ever laid your eyes on. Oh, yeah. Them Tulsa gals is too bad. <laughs> is you keeping your mind on your office, Brother Longtree? The office is well carried out, sir, and I hope it'll meet your recruiter. Mm. Mark time till I get back. I just been spoken with one of them reporter fellas, telling about the arrangements we done made with the Africans to come over there and rejoin them in our native land. And he done hauled off and took a likeness of me and put it in the paper. Who <laughs> the, who's the emperor of the United States of Africa? You or me? Tell that newspaper fellow that I repose with my revenue assignment. That's the picture to go in the papers with the reporters he's going to do in the papers. Tell Miss Mary Lou I would like to present to her in this picture in her full regalia. Why well, call Miss May Lou? Of course, was all the doings of that reporter fella. I didn't want to get wrote up in no paper. That is doubting your consent. Mm -hmm. No, I don't believe Brother Logan was giving it a thought, because I've seen the newspaper men talking to I know. I sent him to find your boat. And I said, you with me. So you all have our pictures took together. Oh, yeah. <laughs> I will pick the sweet. Yes, sir. Didn't think I'd grant you interview as soon as this, did you, young man? I certainly appreciate the break. All right. Is everybody ready? Daddy? That's right. Everybody smile. <laughs> hey, look out there. Where yeah, yeah, what's up there? What do you want? Well, I just come to tell you that the parade is all ready and lined up and ready to travel. Very well, then. We'll be right there. Glad you come to Tulsa with me, Mary Lou. Well, not the way it's supposed to be, ain't it? Oh, say, that's how I'd like it to be, Mary Lou. Well, that's how it's going to be. Of course. Well, there's one or two obstacles in our immediate union in the bonds of matrimony, of which I had to wish to disturb your pretty head. Because just as I overcome other bridges and fences in my path to glory, so with you side me, I can command the mountain to move out the way and get to the other side where victory is waiting for the conqueror. Mm-hmm. 
bottom opens up the house for that black African lodge. They show is a messy looking boy. Uh, cool to me. You better shut up and get to working. That's the reason we's why we is anyway. We ain't never learned the value of holding out for each other. And if you ask me, I think the movement is just grand. We ain't got no flows to mop up in Africa, and no P.I. on the different places for dirt to hide in, to be cleaned up. And everybody's going to be just as much as Tunnel. No exceptions, Nappy. Well, 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 well you, you can have your Africa. I ain't gonna let no c c c cannibals make no s s s s uh, eat me up. <laughs> Look at this, Steve. Now, let me see. Let me see. I've got it. Oh, madam, you? Yes, sir. Step right this way. Tell your mistress that Lieutenant Lawton of the United States of Africa craves to have communion with her immediately. Yes, sir. Mm -hmm. You lead her to b b b back to Africa Lodge. If you's addressing me, I might answer that I's not the leader himself, but his concert. Concert? Well, what kind of instrument does you play? Oh. I have the honor of addressing... Lieutenant Lawton of the United States of Africa. Oh. Is you got your mind on your white snapper? Now, here's where the emperor sits. Oh, I think we'd better mark those position with chairs until the furniture gets here. I was sure they would have been here by now. Look, look, look out there. You're not all paid off that good boy screen. All right. Turn the first wood what we've seen. Oh, what's a little pink screen friend? What do you want to sing? The thing is heavy. Show you. All right. Put it there. Put that one over there. All right, the other one over here. Right down there. Uh, that's right, any general? That's right. Well, lady, that's all going to cost you exactly seven eighty-five for the whole thing. All right, I'll write your check for it immediately. Lady, we don't accept checks from white folks. Now, you know. Well, who are you talking to? I'm the wife of John Bottom, the owner of the paper. Lady, we can't have a view of the wife of Black Bottom. We can't eat no paper. Allow me to offer the services of my purse for the protest. Thank you. How much did you say the bill was for the hauling of the said furniture? Seven thirty-five in cash. One, two, three, and five is eight. And brother, you can keep the change for your services. Good, here's a swell guy. Give us 15 whole cents. Now we can buy some stuff in the Black Star line. Yes, you can go, you can go. Adelia, will you bring some refreshments for the general, please? Yes, ma'am. Supposing you have a seat and stay a while, if you have a few minutes to spare. Much obliged for your hostility. <laughs> and this pillar, made up of the red velvet and gold, and with them the footstool of the emperor himself, is the emblem of how soft it will be for the colored people after they reach the promised land. Oh, gee, this movement sure is interesting. <laughs> Delia, will you see what that extra is about, please? Change, ma'am. Have you got a dime? Allow me to offer my service again. That makes eight ten I owe you, General. Unless well, that's just a matter for the present. Good gracious! Do you see what these headlines say? Chicago to stop the parade and bring the emperor in with or without chains. I call that downright persecution. That's what I call. Oh, gosh! I hope nothing.
something will happen to bring disgrace on Mr. Barnum. He's done fond of this parade and all of his editorial. Oh, my. Madam, you have nothing to be afraid of. The deacon knows what he's going to do long before he do. <laughs> Command your servants to throw open the gates and admit his royal hand. Open the door, genius. Madam, it's your good fortune to have as a guest in your house this day the Emperor of the United States of Africa. Is all been attended to? Lieutenant Lawton. Ours at your service, sir. Peter and I was left alone with my cabinet for a short conference in advance of the artist's duty we've got ahead of us. Uh, Chief! Pencil! Oh, I'm left. Uh, uh, I mean, you can all go to the kitchen where I think this preparing and deglement for one and all. Oh, that's <laughs> good. Oh, that's good. <laughs> Hell of a jam. And I think it's going to take some manipulation to keep us out of trouble this evening. What do you mean? I mean that that no good, no down Carmichael was sending all them telegrams that everything's all right, all fixed with the law to carry out our program, ain't nowhere to be found. The law don't know nothing about our coming here and busting up the traffic regulations and tying up the whole city. You mean we ain't within the law to do no parading? Man, the law don't know you's in town. But when you do find out, something tell me there's gonna be fireworks. Why ain't you read the paper? What paper? I ain't had time to read nothing. We've been hustling all morning trying to keep suspicion from the brothers that we ain't safe here. 
So I had them all down to the Ambry, giving out titles, decorations, and the like. Just said, I guess it's 12 pounds worth, wasn't it, brother? That's right, uh, 12 pound net, that was what written on the box. Mm. I didn't weigh titles and medals so fast, I run out of town. And I expect I got two or three sisters, queens of the same towns in Africa. <laughs> <laughs> now, you know that ain't never going to happen. <laughs> oh, yes, telegram I got from the post office on my way down here. I've got to give it to you. Mm -hmm. uh, dear sir, after the parade today, we are instructed to turn over to you the sum of fifteen thousand dollars mm -hmm. as our contribution to the splendid movement which you have created. Find the ye shall reap Baptist Church. Now you see, brothers, we got great weather. Oh, yeah, that's right. Yeah, and I think yeah. I have a fan on, Brick, which I want to place before you before I cash it out. We, 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 we. Now here's the plan. I revise my line of attack. The parade meet in full room at the corner of 35th and State Street. Mm -hmm. That's where the colored folks is. Yeah, that's right. Well, if the law is coming uptown, they got to start from downtown, ain't they? Well, sure. Yeah. Well, I send my worthy restatement on my left at the head of the downtown Martin parade. And my worthy restatement at my right hand takes charge of the parade which is proceeding in the uptown direction. The day has come to a close. And we've done point our fifteen thousand dollars as is carried out for the parade as was here for a week. At eight o'clock in the evening, we've again assembled at the Amory. But my brother at my left is no longer the lieutenant of the United States of Africa, but the first vice emperor. And the brother at my right hand, the second vice emperor. In the meantime, the emperor himself and person will be make an arrangement for the travel upwards and onwards for to reach New York. Well, when we reach New York, the next step will be to put foot on the boat what will carry us to the promised land. Well, Deacon, uh -huh. I mean, Emperor, mm -hmm. there ain't no words with which I can express my thanks for this emotion, and I hope to always be unworthy of saying. Mm -hmm. Well, that expresses my sentiment exactly. I uh, dignified to be so honored. <laughs> oh, pardon me for intruding, when I had a surprise only for the ears of the Royal Highness that just won't wait. Well, let the sister vice of Sutton so we can have peace in the future. Proceed with the surprise, Countess. His Majesty is waiting for your detainment.
tricks around Chicago, eh? <laughs> you know you's the best one. <laughs> well, is there any further instructions for me? <laughs> uh, that's all for the present. I'll why you further instructions. Since I've been invested with the power of attorney in all matters concerning insurances, my estimates ought to be taken at face value and my judgment in the matter of final. Now, uh, I don't want you gentlemen to misunderstand the attitude which I'm forced to assume in these relations. The situation is a phenomenal one, to say the least, and the procedure in handling it requires unusual skill. So I've therefore enlisted the assistant of Atona's right in Stanwyck, the greatest corporation counselors in the United States, Rhineland and Corby, expert real. And with my staff consisting of Aubrey Austin, uh, whom I submitted before the board last meeting in charge of accounting. Samuel Latchell, the only living licensed Negro navigator in charge of shipping. Now, I feel satisfied in saying uh, that the technical outlook for the new year seems safe and sound. So if there are any questions in reference to investment, expenditure, banking, or any other monetary negotiations, 
I have here an explicit and detailed account for your convenience. As the Vice Emperor, I'd like to know how much money is spent and why for since the coming in of your administration amongst us. Well, uh, well, I don't think that's necessary, Mr. Second Vice Emperor. But as the first Vice Emperor, I'd like to know how much money we've done took in and where from and what's come of it. I think that both the first and the second Vice Emperor done spoke out of turn. I should apologize to the chair for preacher etiquette. Uh, I would say, to my mind, that the most important question now to answer is how much is going to to carry out this year's project? How much money is going to take to run this year's ship? How much time is going to take to reach the shoals of Africa? Find out now, the passengers are laboring under belief that they don't pay their fare, and you ain't got no right collecting no new money for sale. Is we, or is we ain't? Got money in the treasury enough to cover all matters which is pertaining to the safe sailing of the Black Eagle to his destiny. Now, I'm indeed glad you raised those questions, Your Highness. I have the answers right here for your convenience. It'll require $500,000 more in cash, $500,000 more in securities, to give her a clean bill of lading from this country to Africa. Now, the only important thing I haven't touched upon is this the law dealing with passports. Now, here's where we're going to experience some difficulty. Mm. The country to which you are journeying must give you permission to enter before you may do so. Uh, may I ask the board this question? Are we in receipt of any documents from the government of Monrovia? That's what we should have been asking you. Is you got any document? And that's all by see. I've been thinking of some of these questions lately, and I can see my way to overcome some of them. But the rest of them still seems to be in dark. People depending on me to lead them to their natural home. They've been spending the money freely. We've been spending the money freely. Now, I'm here to tell every one of you to send this thing as deep as I is. Them cats don't want no no for no answer. Gentlemen, this is indeed a critical situation. First, you have promised a ship to people without trying to find out what a real one costs. You have even mentioned a sailing date. You have promised land. You have given titles to a country that doesn't even want you in their house. What's that you say, man? What's that you telling me? Yes, I cable the president of Liberia. I have his answer right here. Why, if you gentlemen can stand it, I'll read it with your kind permission, sir. Reason a hell of a jam if you should ask me. People all dressed up and ain't going no place. It says Monrovia, Liberia, and the date. For the Chancellor, the Exchequer, Black Eagle Incorporated, New York City, dear sir. We have taken your cable letter on that bias, and we find it impossible to extend our quota for the current year, trusting that in the future we will have the pleasure of your communication. We remain very respectfully yours. I'm the president of Liberia. How long have you had that head in your hand? Hmm, I received it two days ago. Who have you been showing around to? Yeah, my secretary opened it along with the other man. You mean to tell me the woman found out for two days that we done, ain't going no place? If you put it that way, yes. Brother, don't you know you was guilty of one of the worst repents that a soldier could be shot for? There's some underhand work going on around here. Did you look mighty recluded that the castle should not forthwith report this matter to the chair immediately? And being as the other members of the cabinet feel the way they does about your administration, I've got a giant ass set. After me taking you and making you to cancel the checks, you fixing to scare the brother to death and spy his faithfulness to the cause. We are asking you what you got to say for yourself before we tender you your resignation. Well, gentlemen, it grieves me very much to have to remind that I have been commissioned by a corporation known as the Black Eagle Incorporated, and my resignation, and whether I want to submit it or not, will be a matter for the Board of Administration to decide in quorum and not by proxy. When I get through with you, young man, you'll be too proxy to walk loose in the street. Uh, that is all I have to report to this war. So if you gentlemen don't mind, I'll be leaving, sir. If you don't mind, you're the spy. Then don't let me catch you around here no more. We better tap the treasury some more. But give one grand declaration ball Saturday night. What do you mean that we. What? You know, we got to make a brave front or the ship is sunk. Sunk! Deacon Johnson brought you out of the Rise and Shine Baptist Church where you was digging yams all day and hooping and hollering all night without getting nowhere. He is the one that stuck by me when I was in the need of some resistance. I give you position on the left and right side of me, all the time smoking the best cigars, having your shoes shine, drive around automobiles from one place to the other, having your pictures took, and your fingernails shine without doing a lick of work. That's miracles enough, ain't it? 
And as hundreds I've hit just as I hit you. I might say there's several hundred. So leave the Black Eagle to me. That ship's fine to say you if I have to sail it myself. Glad to see you. Not so. Won't you rest your hat? Thanks. Why, it almost seems like old times, doesn't it? Yeah. You look mighty sweet tonight. Is that the gown you're going to wear to the ball? Oh, this isn't any ball gown. This is a regalia of the first empress of the United States of Africa. Yeah? You look pretty good yourself, Shirley. I guess New York's been mighty good to the both of us. New York has been mighty good to you, all right. But it played hell with me. Oh, don't start that all over again. You promised you wouldn't, you know. I know I promised not to talk about anything concerning both of us. But I'm leaving for home tomorrow, and you are staying here going wherever you're going. And I feel that this is the last chance I have to tell you what I'm feeling in my heart. If you're not going to keep your word about not talking to love, and I ain't just got to listen. You raised enough noise in this man's town for them to keep you in jail. Lord knows I had to make enough promises to get wires working so you could get out to go home safe and sound. I know I acted a fool about you losing my good job following your way down here. When I should have known right down there that night when you double crossed him before everybody shield that man of you on. But I guess I just can't help it. So, honey, when you ain't around and I think of you, I can't think of nothing else but good. And when I see you, you look so sweet. I forgive you for everything you have done to me. Oh, yes. You know I ain't got no business listening to you. Making me forget my obligations and feeling as though nothing ever happened between us. Since that night in front of the church. When we were so happy loving each other. Yes, you loved me until that devil messed you up and turned your head against me. But I still feel, honey, that whatever happens to your head, your heart still belongs to me. <sighs> oh, you You better be going. Because I don't want you to get in no further trouble up here. Lord knows. If anything would have happened to you, it would pretty near kill me. I think it's a shame the way you've messed up our lives. Ain't you got the courage left to be the wife of an honest man who loves you more than anything else in this world? Oh. Hello. Take your job for You better be going. Yeah. I'll be ready in about five minutes. I know. I gave him my word, didn't I? That didn't mean nothing to me. Yeah. All right. Goodbye. Oh, sure. I'm the station wants to make sure that you take the train. And somebody must be watching the house right now because they know that you're, you're here. So for God's sake, don't it's Now, hang on you, huh? You're going to get me out of the way so he can take advantage of you, huh? Thinks he's God Almighty. He's going to run the whole world. Well, if he thinks he can browbeat you into salt soaping me back down south, he's a damn liar. I'm going to stay right here. Shut! Have you gone crazy after all I've gone through? Is this the way you're going to treat me? And if you think I'm going to run away from any nappy headed em emperor, you've got another guest coming tonight. I'm going to be at the ball. Shut! And you're going to stay right here. Ow!
Well, the orders is that the guests must have the ticket in the hand when they present themselves at the door for admission. Now, we don't misplace them tickets. That ought to be enough plain for a piece of paper. I ain't here for the joke to work. I just here to collect the ticket. Listen here, you don't know who you's dressing, do you? Well, I'm the county presenter of all. Lady, I don't care if you're the king of England. You's going to give me a ticket this evening. Man, is your fool. I done told you we ain't got no tickets. I'd like to see some fresh metal common policemen stop me from getting in here. Come on. Oh, oh man. Hey, sir. Yeah. Yeah. Hey, sir. What is the nature of this disturbance? This couple ain't got no tickets and he's trying to crash the way in. May I ask what rank, if any? Why, well, I'm the Countess of Zanzibar, and this am the Count. Well, as the first Vice Emperor of the United States of Africa, I did it fitting and necessary that public apologies be made to both him and her Royal Highness for the bashment that's been posed upon them. not going to take up your time with no speech. I only want to remind you that one of the happiest moments of my life are some of these when I can revive and restore citizens to all those who is worthy of faith. Yeah! 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 Secretary, would you mind reading from the list of emotions we have for this evening? Not at all, Your Majesty. Miss Sadie Treadwell. Sub Lego. makes this declaration, I want to draw your attention to the repotence which is attached to this office. It has to do with the sailing of the Black Eagle, which, as everyone knows, takes place on the 26th, and yeah. which I'd like to say here and now that the boat sails on the aforesaid day. Yeah. Shall I feel the movement of our own steamship line on the mighty? Yeah. Yeah. I can't wait. That I be breeze of the ocean, just a pan on the sails of the ship, which we done bought with our own money <laughs> from the sweat of the black. Yeah. I can't wait till I hear the whistle of the night, the signal of the other ship for sailing the mighty ocean to keep to their own side. Yeah. Yeah. Because we's coming through. Yeah. The black eagle ain't standing no foolishness. No. She's a cutting the waves and a knocking the sharks out of the way. Yeah. I can't wait. Till I see the rising sun coming up in the sky, making everything round about it the color of the rainbow. Yeah. Natives are firing guns. Yeah. I might say cannon guns. Yeah. Yeah. To warn the whole world that we're approaching. Yeah. The often commander of the ship is standing in tension from head to foot of the deck. Yeah. Is you crying to be there? Yeah. Is you crying to the promised land? Yeah. Then we found for the promised land. You've been fooled, cheated, and robbed, and heading for the rock. <laughs> You've got to listen to this man or somebody before it's too late. Rest them. You better stay.
Stand back or else I'll drop the bomb. It's oh. with TNT. Oh. Folks, now will you listen? We're trying to tell you that you haven't got any ships. No, no, no. no. The Africans don't want you in Africa, and the United States won't grant you any passports. Oh. But we have made arrangements for your passage back home. Oh, we oh. wish you. Oh. Okay. Oh. 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 Brother, I've got nothing to confess. I've done no wrong. For years, I've been dreaming of a way to bring the black brethren out of the bonds of slavery, which they still in. For years, I've been dreaming if we all got together like Moses and the children of Israel, that a miracle could happen, and we find a way to live like other people. This dream was so big that all who come in contact with it could see the same as I see. No, I don't know nothing about no science. No, I can't count no money up in no thousands. No, I can't ride no ship by myself. And I can't fight the government single-handed. What I done done the brother this far, and it's up to you all to say who you want to take you further. Bye-bye.